I'm so tapped up, and welcome to Let's Play Witch Hour. No controller support. Um, if you got this game, was provided by the developer. You might recognize the name because I actually played this a long time ago. You can turn off scan lines if you want. I usually try to play pretty vanilla. I'm not a big fan of scan lines and the such, but uh, like I said, I'll play it vanilla. Challenging despite its name. Unlocks after clearing leap one, leap two. All right. So there's some unlocks to get. We're just gonna go with the basic. Uh, doubles and attack. That sounds good. Oh, you get two. I love those Roman numeral one and two, so my plan on, um, Turbo Graphics. So this is a twin stick, well, can it be called a twin stick shooter when you're using a mouse? But, uh, it's, it's that. I don't know if, I don't I don't know if controller support is planned, like, forever, but uh, it's definitely not in release. This just came out, um, a day or two ago, at least as of me recording this. I'll probably post it pretty soon after. Um, ooh. So yeah, this is very little like what the original version was. The, the original was a pretty, um, was a horizontal shoot 'em up that, um, it was very cute, but uh, I guess kind of lacked the differentiating factor. And uh, so it got made into a twin stick roguelike. And uh, I actually didn't know it was out until I got the email. And they're like, hey, it's, it's out. Here's a key. <laughs> I, um, it's never too late. Wait, HP. Alert level increases slower. I'm gonna go with that one, I guess. Um, I never turned down a game for being too old, but uh, I do appreciate a heads up before a game releases. If you're an indie dev and you want to, um, you know, pitch your game to YouTubers, it helps to have a few days at the bare minimum to play a game before launch, so I can have a video ready for launch. Otherwise, you know, if I get an email on launch, usually the next day is the, the earliest I can do a video. I do have a day job for now, and um, I won't necessarily be able to do a full video and edit and post all, uh, all in one night. Is it just because the screen shake make it seem almost like the, the CRT effect goes away? Like, I guess it's just the blurring into each other. Whoa. I guess the music was coming from down here. Ah. Ow. That took two health. So yeah, right click does your magic. I would have expected. Um, Alright. I have not played this before this very moment, so... Uh, it's a roguelike, it's kind of... I'll play roguelikes, but I kind of got to show you just like my first couple playthroughs, because I'm not really... I don't tend to get too into roguelikes, I don't tend to, you know, play them enough to get really good at them, except uh, a couple of exceptions, mostly just Binding of Isaac. Uh, quills... Counterattack when hit by bullets. Divide death. Do more damage when way HP. Inspires you to parry bullets. Okay. Boss time. It's Big Sword Man. Not related to Small Sword Man. In stores now. Oh. So time slow slows bullets, but not enemy themselves, maybe? Oh, ow. Close. Oh no, my shots only go screen length. That's a bit dangerous. Okay, we're good. Maybe. Alright. We beat the first, like, map, which is better than I usually do in a roguelike. Tank increases maximum HP Y1. My bullets bounce. See farther, aim easier. Ah, I'm gonna get that health. I'm liking the music in this. I don't recall the music in the original version. Do I have more shots now, or no, I don't think I do. Whoa, holy, whoa. I have more shots coming at me, that's for sure. Uh-oh, okay. Arc. Oh no. Okay, okay, we salvage it, sort of, okay. That was dangerous, should not have done that. All right, I have so much MP, whoa. Those disappear after like three seconds. My least favorite mechanic. I mean, there's other inferior mechanics, but uh, 
Never been a big fan of that. I've never been a fan of like, like certain game design things are, you know, informed by, you know, limited spec old console stuff. Like, uh, say turn-based RPGs. This, but a lot of them are still good. Things disappearing because you didn't get them fast enough. I mean, I guess it can increase, you know, more damage when I want HP. Nah, alert level. Haven't had that happen. Get your first, your first hit on the floor kills. Eh. Let's go with Defy Death. Um, I guess the game is focused on speed, ow. So it would make sense. I guess that's kind of the intent. To, you know, keep you moving. But uh, I'm still not a huge fan. Like, do the potions, like, go bad in three seconds? Why does he parry bullets? That's rude. Oh gosh, oh gosh, okay. Also, this game has, um, I mean, it's not really the game, but um, Windows 10 has an issue where a lot of games suddenly, can those buried bullets hit me? Or, that seems kind of random. I'm a little worried. Um, yeah, Windows 10 currently has an issue where certain games will, uh, you just get a black screen. And I had this with this game and a couple others. Well, just one other. And um, what you need to do is go find the main executable file for the game and put it in Windows 8 compatibility mode. Uh, there wasn't, I don't think there was even like a major Windows update. I don't, I don't know why they can't test their, their updates a bit better. Because like this should have been like a really easy like issue to find. The games just turn up like totally black. Which was, what was weird is that I could see them in my uh, recording preview. But I didn't want to, um... I didn't want to be showing, like, oh... Frick. Oh my god. Um... You gotta be kidding me, what? This better be, like, some special gauntlet floor. Then it's not, like, always like this, is it? Ah! My hour has been witched. Thou hath died, escape to continue. Uh, what's my next unlock? I don't know how that meter fills. Like, it's just killing stuff? Advancing floors, maybe? We'll go... We'll go one more round, I guess. I guess I didn't unlock anything. <laughs> um... Doubles and attack. Doubles and attack. Oh, wait. Wait, how do I switch between things? Middle mouse? Oh, it doubles as an attack, I guess. It's like a dash, and it hits the whole room. Oh, I see. It, uh, spacebar changes the thing. I see. Um, forgot what I was gonna say. I was supposed to use that to get out of rooms, not into them, but, uh... Ah! I have died already. Like I said, not... I don't tend to play... Um, enough of roguelikes to really get good at them, but, uh... Some cool stuff going on here. Never been the hugest fan of screen shake as like an omnipresent game design thing, but you can turn that off too. I like that there's been lots of options. Options are good. Put options in your game. Uh, there's been some people like, oh, you don't want to put too many options because people will get confused. It's like the people who will get confused by too many options will just never open the options menu in the first place. Like, it's not a problem for basically anyone. Uh, just have all the options you can reasonably put in that, like, are worth developing. Like, Legend of Dark Witch, um, that's a game, like, most platformers have zero options. Maybe they have, like, amount of, uh, let's try Sniper. Maybe they have, like, amount of, um, m like, music volume as an option. If you're Mario, maybe you don't even have that. Um, but Legend of Dark Witch has lots of options, and it's really nice to see that in a platformer. And even their RPG has some decent options. I've seen better options menus. Disgaea, if you want RPG with options, uh, Disgaea is very good. 
Also, um, Neptunia Victory 2 has a fantastic set of post-game options and normal game options, I guess. Did I unlock a thing? What was that? I don't know what that was. Oh, I got leveled up! What's my... Okay, so each kill gives me a point. Is that unlock level, or... Did I... Is... Wait, is my upgrades because of that? I'm a little confused here. I wasn't paying attention to that. I didn't even notice that. Negates one hazard per floor. I'm gonna go with tank. Rogue coming out. I don't know if that one hazard means like one hit, or like a stage hazard. Like hazard makes me think, you know, like lava pits on floors, not like bullets in the face. I mean bullets in the face are hazardous, but I, I would usually say that as like an attack. Hazard seems more like passive. I thought the blood I guess that they're not like quite procedural, but there's a lot of different blood splatters. Keeps it a little bit more visually interesting. Peak gamer content. Blood splatters for visual interest. Okay. You do the same thing? Yeah. That's another thing I'm not a huge fan of in roguelikes is that like... Like in video games, generally your first time against a boss that is at least reasonably difficult, you're gonna die. That's not usually a huge problem, but with roguelikes, like, you get through, like, 90% of the game, or, like, you know, 80% at least, and you find a totally new boss, and you die just because you don't really know what the boss does, and so you have to replay all of the parts of the game that you know how to do alright. And then you go... Bleh. I like how, um... I like how Binding of Isaac handles that situation. It has multiple final bosses. Feral Armor unlocked. I got- oh, no! I want to change my things! Um, how do I do this? Normal. Feral armor made from hides! Gives plus one HP and one, minus one MP. Oh yeah, I completely forget my MP even exists, so that's definitely for me. Heal yourself by drinking enemies' blood! Heck yeah! I'm all about drinking blood. Start game. Alright, this sounds like a way more fun outfit to use. Um... What was I saying? But, oh yeah, I like how Binding of Isaac... So Binding of Isaac arguably has the exact same problem, right? You know, you're gonna die a lot to mom, and then you're gonna be like, Oh no, I died and again, and it's like, I gotta replay the game. But with Binding of Isaac makes you feel like you beat the final boss. Like, seven freaking times. So like, it really feels like you're fighting the final boss when you fight mom's heart. And then the game does freaking end, which adds to the feeling. Like, it's in difficulty and in terms of, like, just gameplay. You beat the game, uh, you unlock stuff, you feel a sense of progression, but then there's more after it. I think that, um... I think that's really what helped, what, uh, makes Binding of Isaac feel a bit different to me. Cause like, I don't mind as much when it, it feels like I'm making progress, whereas with most roguelikes it just feels like I'm hitting yet another brick wall. Increase intelligence. I love how I'm like, berserker, but also intelligence. Go unnoticed when entering a floor. That's really interesting. I have to try this. Look at your little face! Look how unnoticed I am. They're aiming directly at my face. But they're not shooting, at least. Oh, okay. I, I figured that might be a little bit too good to be true. So yeah, it, it only lasts for a little bit, even if you don't shoot. We'll see if it stays on, even if you do shoot. I kind of doubt it. But I figured, like, you could, like, scout out the level, which I kind of could. I went to through most of the level. I wasn't quite ready for that. Drink blood. Drink the blood. Drink the blood! Okay, I, I thought when it said drink blood, it was like... If you... Like, killing an enemy would restore health. But apparently not. I don't know. I have a meat. I have a meat thing. I don't know what that does. I don't appear to be drinking any blood right now. Unless it's a different button, is it? I don't, I don't, there doesn't seem to be any other button. I'm terrified that pressing escape, okay, it doesn't. Let's see if our controls, up, down, left, right, confirm, L shift. Wait, left shift, is that? Okay, 
L shift. Oh, okay. I can't use it again for a while. Okay, so there is a separate ability that I wasn't using before. You just gotta use left shift. Uh, quills, counterattack. I don't want to get hit. Increased invincibility frames. Anarchist. Just seems to max HP. Oh, definitely not. I'm gonna go with hard body. Oh, yep. Shooting immediately discards it, which is what I expected. Left shift. So you can only use it once per floor, I suppose? Now I'll have to read what my first form's ability was. I guess this isn't quite as hard. I guess it's just kind of the cycle of roguelike, because you're always going to miss stuff your first few runs. Quite possibly your first, like, 18,000 runs. The dance I'm currently doing on the WASD keys is why I vastly prefer using an analog stick for uh, games like this. I, um... I don't really like keyboard and mouse. I like the mouse part. I do not like the keyboard part. Keyboard is not really, in my opinion, a very effective thing for playing game. It's got a lot of buttons, but you don't need most of the buttons. Generally, the, the buttonness is completely unnecessary. Um, I've been meaning to try out one of those gamepad things where you like... It's like a keypad and an analog stick. So, but I heard the analog sticks are usually bad on those, and it's like, that is the whole point of your existence! Your whole existence is to add a freaking analog stick to my keyboardery! If I just wanted keys, I would use a keyboard! I have a keyboard! It's a nice keyboard! Um, frick. Wait, can I drink my own blood? I don't think I can. It's too small. I can drink your blood, though. Yes! You should get, like, bonus blood for, like, boss. Wait, the alert thing keeps going even when you're freaking. Huh. But yeah, the, the alert thing kept going up. I don't know what that does. I assume it just means more and more powerful enemies, I guess. Fancy footwork. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Good music. Oh. It's like ogres. Our game is ogre. Excuse me, friends. Also, this is the... Oh! Is this the Pika Wait um, palette? Uh, I've seen lots of other games that aren't actually Pika Wait use it. It's a very good palette. Uh, I think I would like NES games a lot more if they had a palette like the Pika Wait. What's weird is that the Pika Wait has a much more limited, absolute palette than um, most 8 bit systems, I think. But it displays more of them at once, I think. Though, uh, Master System could show a lot more than the, uh, little, um, NES could at once. I think maybe killing X number of enemies is how I refill my thing? My ability? I thought that sound meant I had killed all the enemies on the floor, but I guess not. The alert meter's going up. I've survived this a lot longer than I thought I would. I enjoy that. Music is a little bit loud, relatively, but I, you know, I edit videos, I'll fix that for you. Defy Death, Mana Fountain, don't need that. I guess we're going with Defy Death, because the other ones are Mana. Which I barely even remember exists, oh my god. Oh no, they reflect too! Oh, that's freaking. oh, that was cheap. Oh wait, wrong button. All right, we survived though. We survived. We're fine. We're fine. Oh, jeez, that is that is rude considering I was in an enclosed space. All right, we're good now. I do find myself wishing there were more, like, visually interesting, like trash and stuff on the floor. You know, visual embellishments. Obviously, it's not gonna matter gameplay-wise, but uh... I really like that. Like, roguelikes have some visual interest in, like, what you're seeing. It just makes new areas feel a bit more rewarding, because you find new stuff to gawk at. There's a lot of bottlenecking enemies in this game. It seems to be how you avoid death. Danger, avoid death. Best sign. There's like an- I don't even know what it's for, but there's like this warning sign. It just says, danger, avoid death. I mean, it's always relevant, but... I'm not sure it's particularly helpful. Drink some blood. 
Oh boy, we're gonna get to see what happens when the alert meter fills, aren't we? Oh my god. Oh god, I'm gonna regret this so much. Oh no! Okay, so enclosed space is not as useful as possibly believed. I don't I don't really like these levels that start with like 18,000 enemies exactly in your face. But uh, other than that, I guess we don't get a hint at what our other things are. How close are we to our next unlock? I'm uh, pretty close. But yeah, that's Witching Hour. Um, oh, stats! Enemies killed. We killed 300 enemies in just the last 20 minutes. Four deaths, favorite spell, concentration, fave upgrade, fancy footwork. Right, stage one, two, three. Is that, how, how, how does that stage logic work? Anyway, yeah, that is Witching Hour. You can check it out on Steam. Um, I'm not sure if it's still on Itch.io. Um, let me check. I think it's still on here. Yeah, it's still on. It's 10% uh, off even. It's uh, 5 bucks on Itch.io or Steam. Um, I think you get... Uh, I assume you get a Steam key. It doesn't specifically mention. But uh, yeah, that's Witching Hour.